All right, today's video, let's talk about auto insurance. So I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos about everything's getting more expensive, homeowner's insurance, auto insurance, uh, just everything. People, people just are being dropped for no reason. And uh, some of the reasons are the insurance premiums have gone up, mainly to cover the uh, uh, EVs. EV uh, accidents cause a lot of damage. And most time like when an EV vehicle gets in an accident, it's totaled because the uh, battery pack, once that thing's damaged, there's the uh, threat of the uh, thermal runaway on these uh, lithium ion batteries. The thermal runaway, it takes tons and tons of water just to put out, and then they can even reignite. So when the tow companies take away these EVs, they, uh, they park them, they deposit them in a field not surrounded by anything. So at least a 50 foot buffer and they put them up on blocks so they can get under them in case the things catch on fire. Uh, so they think that's part of the reason insurance premiums are going up. And also we got a lot of uh, nefarious immigration activity where people are just be, uh, being given IDs, driver licenses, and they don't know how to drive because they're from uh, North America. So there are uh, massive accidents everywhere, uninsured motorists, and that's causing premiums to go up. Having said that, there's one thing to consume content, say on YouTube, you gotta also act. Then I looked and said, what was this bill? I would look down and said, oh my God, my premiums at Progressive Insurance went up. And uh, we also have another car on State Farm. And uh, I don't know why I didn't combine them because you do get a, a little minuscule discount for multiple vehicle uh, policy. So what we did, if you look over here, you can actually go to Progressive. They, I mean, the name is what it is, and there's a reason why they call it Progressive, and the owner, it's all political years ago. But put that aside, uh, they do have a decent business, despite the ideology of the owner. Uh, so you can go in and actually do premiums and check quotes, you know, make a quote. On auto, just focus on auto for now. You can do auto, and then the more you do bundle, you get a little bit of a discount. Is it much? Eh, not really, but it's something. 10 bucks is 10 bucks, right? I went through and uh, compared and contrast between uh, State Farm and Progressive. State Farm does pay out if you have an incident. They don't really seem to give you much issue. Progressive, I never had an issue to make a claim. Um, but in general, we have two vehicles one is a 2012 toyota sequoia uh runs great we drive under 5,000 miles on that thing a year we live in a small small town and if we do want to go places we'll fly or we'll run a car because we don't want to worry about messing our cars up the other car is a 2016 oh what is it toyota tacoma all paid for no tickets we have two teenage kids on the policy. Driving records are all clean. And uh, no accidents, no claims. I'm trying to think what else. And the one kid is not even living here. She's, uh, she is away at school. So that really doesn't affect the policy. All these things are asked, asked you. Is that a word? Or asked you when you do the uh, quotes. Stay from, I don't know. I tried to do their stuff. It didn't make sense. We emailed them. It took them uh, quite a few days to get back to us. Progressive was really responsive. They do have people you can call once you get past the bots. And then you, they'll save your quote. So in finding the quote and the best price, I found my experience was Progressive was the best experience in getting the quote. I already had a car with them. Uh, I, upped the, I upped the coverage. So now both vehicles have the same coverage, including collision and all the other bull crap required. You can just go minimum state required, which may be a smart move because insurance is just getting ridiculous. In a few years, you'll pay more in insurance than the actual cost of the vehicle that you're insuring. It's criminal, man. It's almost extortion. And uh, I don't know, man. It's just, it's just getting out of control. But having said that, for what I have, the clean record, old cars driven under 5,000 miles each a year, if that, we still pay. Now with Progressive, which is the lower rate, the lower quote we just flipped over to today, 
is still four thousand bucks a year. I know some people pay more, but four thousand bucks a year on a 2012 Toyota Sequoia. It also includes the Tacoma, but still the Sequoia's value, if it's in excellent shape, which it's not, you know, the little you know you know minor dings and bangs and stuff from wear and tear over the over the past twelve years. The thing's probably worth 19k. Jeez, so it's just insane. You're in, the insurance is costing more than the value of the vehicle. So at what point do you total the vehicle? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. So then going to State Farm, that quote came in, even with combined, came in at almost two thousand dollars more. Yes, you heard me right. It came in at about uh, close to six k a year. And that's with two teenage kids on a policy, same coverage as progressive. And uh, it's just ridiculous, man. And again, you are covering for the EV market, the EV owners where the cost is incredible and it's hurting these insurance companies. Now you got all these hurricanes and floods, which are destroying cars. Cause once a car is submerged in salt water, I think fresh water, you might be able to flush it out, but salt water destroys absolutely everything, every connector, all the wiring, it's gone. If it gets inside, just you got to flush it immediately, but you can't. It's gone. Once even a boat, once it's under, it's on, it's under, it's gone. The electronics are fried, and everything else starts to start rusting out and uh, corroding with the salt. So now the insurance companies have that with um, the 50 hurricanes we had this year uh, produced. <laughs> just you know, you got massive amount of claims coming from Florida, North Carolina, Tennessee. In Georgia. Uh, yeah. So insurance companies are going to start feeling it. Premiums will probably go higher. So we want to progress it. They had 2000 bucks at 2000 bucks. I can actually go eventually drop collision. You get to the point where you want to just get the minimum legal state required insurance. So the big, big Papa Daddy doesn't come after you with a nasty letter. You need insurance. So let me ask you this on a freaking policy. Why do you have to have uninsured motorist coverage when everyone's supposed to have insurance how can there be an uninsured motorist policy it makes no sense sounds like just another scam to take your money it's all extortion all the way down oh my god it's like pay us or else yeah i'm so sick of it and maybe it is true these globalists want to say you'll own nothing and be happy it's almost to the point where they're making it that way because owning a car and paying <laughs> almost more than it's worth over a year or two in insurance you just want to take uber everywhere I said, how many Uber rides could 4,000 bucks cover in a year? And it's quite a bit. So it's, it makes you wonder if that's the motive here. Is these insurance companies are owned by one big company, say BlackRock, I'm not sure, most likely. And they're just putting a squeeze on the common man. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Now add in the homeowner's insurance, hurricane insurance, winds to, oh my God. It's just, and wages are not going up. People's wages are not going. People are hurting. And now you see these stupid premiums the way they are. Uh, wages are not matching any of this inflation crap or these price gouging or not only it's price gouging, but it's just is the beast it is. And then now you got these politicians, these people running. You want to you want four more years of the same corruption we have? No, vote that regime out. This is insane. We got to stop the madness. Or we're all going to be on welfare if there is welfare. They can't even pay out uh, to people in our country for hurricane damage. They pay overseas people billions and billions with a, with a push of a button, uh, try to go get money to help people who need it uh, from storm damages. Oh, it's like, no, 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 no. We need equity, inclusion, diversity first, and then maybe we'll think about it. It's all, you know, FEMA, man. These, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to get on that rant, but you, these, these organizations, these, uh, Government institutions, these government agencies need all to be defunded and start over. FEMA was started by Jimmy Carter in the 70s. So take that for what it is. Uh, I think now he's the next to worst president in the, in the history of the United States. Biden's, Biden's pretty much beat him. <laughs> so anyway, just facts, man. Just facts. Just talk, it's kind of the way it is. Anyway, that's it. little political rant in there. Now you know. But again, it's all, it's all a big... It's all a monolith machine. Will it ever change? I don't know, but I don't know. Wages aren't going up to match insurance. And I found that Progressive, for what it is, is one of the best out there in just saving a couple bucks. And you can probably save more, but my God, at what point do you just tap out and say, 4,000 bucks for car insurance on a clean record 
and you only drive under 5,000 miles a year per vehicle. <laughs> it just makes no sense at all. It should be like 200 bucks a year. It's so stupid. I don't know. Have you guys had enough? Oh, go watch that old movie Network. And uh, you'll do as the anchor says. Just watch it. You, you'll appreciate the movie. Anyway, that's all I got. Just thought I'd share. I'm sure if I'm feeling the pain and I'm getting a little frustrated and angry and can't wait for this election to get over with and make changes, this is just driving me nuts. I'm sure everyone else is hurting too. Yeah, it's all about the economy, stupid. And it's the economy and it's the economy. It's the economy. Uh, yeah, vote accordingly, man. We're in trouble. I'm in trouble. People are in trouble. They're hurting. Uh, yeah. Anyway, little dose of reality. Trying to keep it on the upswing, the positive, but there's some reality stuff people have got to face. And uh, I don't know. Does voting matter? I have no idea. We'll find out. All right. What else is going on? I'm just watching some markets here. And uh, let's see where we're at. Stocks. What's going on today? I don't even know what today is. The 10th. Milton just went through Florida. I don't think the reports are they didn't get the surge in Tampa as they were expecting. I think the hurricane sucked all the bay water out like tsunami-like, but nothing really came back monstrous. So thank God for that. Typical outer islands always get hit and swamped. You're living on a beach. Come on. It's bound to happen. It still sucks. Uh, but I noticed in the damage, the coverage, the, the houses on stilts, especially where we're at, the stilt houses, 10 foot or up, they do fine. They, they are okay, get some wind damage, but they're not flooded. The other houses on the ground with the foundation, a slab, they get inundated with sand and flooding and critters and stuff. Stilts should be mad. I think it is the new building laws. You have to have Cat 5, everything stilts based on elevation, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, just get smart about it. All right. I think every house should be made of concrete and elevated. <laughs> And maybe round, because then round, you won't catch the wind. If you have a square building, you're catching that wind on that side, making a stronger force. Round buildings, concrete, elevated, blammo. And actually keeps, especially in Florida, keep your house cooler in the summer. But no, we don't do that because it makes sense. Although I do think in Homestead, after it got wiped off the planet years ago with a hurricane, they did rebuild cinder block homes, uh, well built, and I think they learned. So that's the way to go. All right, what else is going on? Stock quick. Boom, boom, boom. What's going on? Bitcoin. Oh, boo, boo, Bitcoin. Bitcoin's a big disappointment. I am sorry, guys. It is really not making me happy. So the only good thing about Bitcoin is I'm in Misty, which is a derivative, which buys MicroStrategy, which owns a lot of Bitcoin. And at least I get a nice sweet dividend with it. And maybe some net asset value erosion with it and some positive. It's just, it's hit or miss. I just buy it to get the dividend and um, treat it like real estate. That's the only positive thing about Bitcoin right now. I'm a little like, Turk by it. It should be up in the 80s or 90s by now, but it's not. Uh, fiat, again, is uh, betting that the dollar against the, the big guys like NVIDIA, it's gonna go up and kind of in a, uh, what do you call it, a recessionary thing, fiat will shoot up. So it's not looking too bad. They come out at 20, they're holding at 20. It's not, that's a good sign. Crash I have, which is bad for me. Uh, it's the inverse of Tesla. And it's down from 20 to that. And so, but I get a dividend on it, but I'm still in the hole a bit on that. Uh, yeah, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You can only ever always lose everything. Uh, Wolf is a miner. I need that to go back up. It was up. I was up a couple hundred bucks. Boom, I didn't sell. I got greedy. I should have sold and cashed out because I'm not getting a dividend on Wolf. Uh, I needed to go back up to about five bucks. Get out, get my money back. Uh, the other good thing is oil is kicking butt because in the Middle East, they're going to, you know, turn everything into a sea of glass over there. So oil is going to really go up more. Look at it. The thing went up 13 bucks per share in the past month due to the crazy people overseas. Uh, why can't we all just get along? Just have one big picnic. You know, that's all you got to do. I don't know. That's all I got. Just ramble. Insurance, stocks, a boring day after the storms went through. People were just kind of like taking a nice sigh of relief. and. Uh, why not make some content and just shoot the poop and uh, have a good day? All right. That's all I got. I will see. I will see. I'll talk to you guys or you talk to me or whatever. We'll see each other in the next video, whatever I come up with. I got some car stuff planned. Uh, I got to do the brakes on the Sequoia. I'm just a matter of waiting for the humidity to drop down here in Florida. And uh, once that drops, 
it'd be easier to go outside instead of sweating like a pig. Uh, yeah, it always sucks trying to work on stuff in the summer here. You're sweating on everything. It's not a good thing. Uh, I got to do some house stuff as well. So I'm waiting for the 70, high 70s to get down here and I can actually go outside and do some real work and get some stuff done on the house. And um, yeah, maybe sell them and get out of Florida. I don't know. But Florida is a great state. Just the storms do stress you out. They do. They add, they add a lot of anxiety, especially if you own a house. Because you know if the house gets whacked, you're going to spend years fighting the insurance company. And they're going to offer you a tenth of what they promised. You're going to have to get lawyers, pay the legal fees, fight the insurance companies, blah, blah, blah. And you know that, that adds to the anxiety and stress of owning a house in Florida. Not the storms themselves, just the aftermath and the legality of bureaucracy and how horrible these agencies and companies are to the people that pay them. It's, it's just the truth, man. Oh, no one's coming to save you, buddy. You're in, you know, you may have a couple good neighbors, a couple good friends. That's about it. All right. Keeping it real. All right. I will talk to you in the next one. I'm out. I'm going to just, uh, I don't know. I'm going to go outside and walk around a bit. Take care.